fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Pull back, Bobby, is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's a star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice... Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! For several weeks, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had been trailing three outlaws led by a man named Baldy Bennett. The trail had been long and difficult, and as they approached the town of Rawhide, the tracks they had been following suddenly disappeared in the moonlit darkness. <laughs> the two men drew rein and dismounted to study the hard-packed rocky ground. Brooks, plenty smart at covering tracks, Kimasabi. It's slow work, trail them from here. I wonder if they've gone to town. Uh, maybe them go there. Maybe Campin' Hills. Hard to say. Well, you look for their trail. I'll ride to town to tell Marshal Joe Howe about Baldy and his men. Mm, that's a good idea. Hello. I'll meet you here in about an hour, Toto. Uh, maybe then me pick up trail again. I hope so. I'll see you later. Come on, sir. Unknown to the Lone Ranger and Toto, the outlaws were already in town, intent on robbing the bank. While Baldy Bennett and Jack Murdoch worked at the safe, Clip Nolo and Squint stood guard outside. Squint said, Someone's coming this way. Get the drop on him so we can't sound the alarm. I'll go inside and warn Baldy and Jack. Squint ran to the bank to warn his friends, while Clip listened tensely to the sound of approaching hoofbeats. The rider was Marshal Joe Howe, making his nightly round of town. As soon as he came into view, Clip called. Draw rein, mister. You're covered. Draw rein and stop laying. Now get your hands up. What's going on here? Nothing for you to worry about if you keep quiet and do as you're told. You're talking to the wrong man, straight. As the marshal reached for his gun, Clip saw the moonlit badge on the lawman's vest. Instinctively, he triggered his gun. Marshal Howell fell from the saddle. Are you chugging? I told you to keep that critter quiet. What's the idea of the gun, bud? Well, that fellow's the lawman. Right. He went for his gun. That shot will bring everyone in town here to investigate. Hit the saddle and scatter, boys. Hey. Did you get the cash, Baldy? We got it. No thanks to you. Come on. Get get it. It. The gang was racing away from the bank when Marshal Joe Howell regained consciousness. As he struggled to a sitting position, the Lone Ranger reached his side. Marshal Howell, are you all right? Stop the bullet. Easy, easy. What? Great Scott, mister. Where'd you come from? I just drawn rain at the back door of your house when I heard the gun play. Everyone in town heard it. They're, they're coming here. You're, you're mad. Don't worry about my mask. You need help. I'll be all right. Hey, what's the matter? What happened? Take it easy, folks. Marshal Howe. 
Well, what happened? What's the hey, who's the masked man? The masked man's my friend, the Lone Ranger. Oh, the yeah. bank's been robbed. Four men, they headed south. You'll be taken care of now, Marshal. I'll go after the bank robbers. Moonlit tracks on the ground guided the masked man from town. But presently, he reached the place where the tracks separated. Without stopping, he continued his pursuit of one of the gang. Montilla! The powerful stallion gradually reduced Clip Nolo's lead. Looking back over his shoulder, Clip saw his pursuer. He spurred his horse. Get up! Get up there! The roan was no match for the mighty silver. Clip snatched his gun from its holster and fired over his shoulder. The shot went wide. The masked man took his coiled lariat from its place. A moment later, the rope arced through the air. Clip saw the loop too late to escape. Hey. It dropped over his shoulder. Oh, oh, oh. Jerked him from the saddle as his hard-pressed roan raced ahead. Too badly jarred to struggle, he was barely conscious when the Lone Ranger halted the great horse Silver nearby. Oh, oh, easy, oh, easy, oh, easy. Shaking his head to clear his vision, Clip saw his roan stop of its own accord on the trail ahead. Uh, then he heard a sharp command. Got the gun. Yeah. Uh, I might as well. My arm fitting to my sides. I can't use it. Now, on your feet. Hey. Hey, you're mad. That's right. What's the idea? Chase me like I was a low coach steer in a stampede. I figured you were alone. As far as you're concerned, I am. Huh? I'm taking you back to Rawhide. What? For what? Bank robbery and murder. I'm going to turn you over to the law. An hour later, the Lone Ranger drew rein with his prisoner in front of Marshal Howe's home. Inside, Clip Nolo learned the identity of the man who had captured him. Marshal Howe chuckled at the expression on the outlaw's face. <laughs> I want to thank you for bringing him in, mister. His friend got away, Marshal. Yeah, but this one's the fella who shot me. Who are you? Clip Nolo. This fellow traveled with Baldy Bennett's gang. What? Baldy recruited him in the town of Green Rock. How'd you know that? How did I have been on your trail for weeks? My trail? Baldy Bennett's trail. When he reached Green Rock, he had two men with him. A safe cracker known as Chicago Jack Murdoch. I've heard of him. And a scar-faced gunman named Squint. Those two have traveled with Bennett for over a year. I didn't know Baldy Bennett was anywhere near here. I came to town earlier this evening to warn you about him. I, I was too late. You know more than I figured. I reckon I might as well talk. Those fellas never trusted me anyway. Where are they going from here? We split up to throw the law off our trail. All of us were to meet Friday at Chimney Rocks, about five miles north of the town of Moose Jaw. Then Baldy planned to take us to some fella in Moose Jaw. He said he'd hide us for a price till the law gave up looking for us. Who's the man in Moose Jaw? Baldy wouldn't tell me. Neither would the rest of the gang. Squint said most fellas on the Dodge know the gent. Mm-hmm. This isn't the first time I've heard about that man. You know him, Marshal? I wish I did, mister. How do I find him? How? I, I don't know yet. We'll get him. Adios, Marshal. So long, mister, and thanks. I'll send the deputy in to take the prisoner to jail. Fine. Let me know if you overtake Baldy and his men with the loot from the bank. Right. Late the following Friday, the masked man and his Indian friend reached Chimney Rocks, north of Moose Jaw. Oh, 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 oh. We're only five miles from town, Dotto. That good. He want to take scout to blacksmith. Oh? A uh, shoe on left front foot loose. He take him to blacksmith to tighten. While you're in town, learn as much as you can about Baldy Bennett and his friends. Ah. Uh, me try to find out if anyone in town see crook. I'll wait for you in the hills near the campsite we used the last time we were here. Uh, me remember place. I'll see you later. That's right. Get him up, scout. Go on, sir. Sometime later, Toto drew rein in front of Sid Cinder's blacksmith shop in Moose Jaw. Oh, Scout. Oh, Father. Easy, Scout. Easy. He dismounted and led Scout inside. Cinder, a beady-eyed man in his late forties, stopped his work to study the Indian and the horse he led into the shop. How? Oh. Hey, Rich Kitty. Horse have loose shoe on left front foot. Well, I can fix that. But I don't work for engines unless I get paid in advance. Oh. Uh, how much you charge? Sid named the price. Then watched Tonto take a well-filled pouch from a pocket of his buckskin shirt. 
As the Indian dropped a coin on the smithy's forge, Sid grinned, exposing a row of uneven tobacco-stained teeth. I reckon I had you figured wrong, Injun. Isn't that all right? I'll do a first-rate job for you. Uh, I may come back by and by for scouts. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one to have that happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and do, do, do an okay, okay. Sure enough, take Midwestern champions, for instance. When Bobby Feller takes the mound, the outfield boys sit on the ground. That Wheaties pitching leaves them there, watching batters fan the air. And when we name our Wheaties crew, big Ted Klazuski's in there, too. He'll face those hurlers day or night and knock their fastballs out of sight. Bob Feller and Ted Klazuski both know that Wheaties magic. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be do 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 and okay. Okay. to continue. Unable to learn anything about Baldy Bennett and his gang, Tonto returned to the blacksmith shop. Sid Cinder grinned at him knowingly. Well, uh, where'd you steal this paint engine? Me not steal him. Sheriff March might figure different if he saw the mask you got in your saddlebag. Mask? Yeah. A black felt mask. Just the kind of fella would wear in a hold of it. Oh, you stupid... Now, Now, take it easy, take it easy. I might be a mighty good friend to you. Uh, What do you mean? I've hid lots of fellas like you for a price, of course. Uh, You hide crook? Sure. For a price, like I said. If you're in trouble, I'd be willing to feed and shelter you till the law gets tired looking for you. Realizing the grinning blacksmith was in reality the man with whom Baldy Bennett and his gang hoped to find sanctuary, Tonto decided to encourage Sid's mistaken impression. And when it's safe for you to shove on, you can clear out. No one will be any the wiser. Well, sheriff in town. How you get away with hiding crooks? The sheriff thinks I'm an honest citizen. Oh, you fool him, huh? Him and everyone else in town. Now, I... I wouldn't offer you the use of the hideout, but I've had tough luck lately. Uh, maybe me need hideout right now. <laughs> I thought as much. Come on, I'll show you where to bunk. With a quick look outside to make sure no one was watching, Sid led Toto through a door in the shop to his living quarters. There, he lifted a trap door in the floor. I'll get down first. You follow me. Steps led to a well-lighted cellar beneath the shop where three men played cards at an improvised table. In the lantern light, Tonto recognized Baldy Bennett, Chicago Jack Murdoch, and Squint. Baldy studied the Indian closely as Sid explained... I got a new customer, boys. He's on the dodge, too. Uh, what do you want it for, Injun? <laughs> Horse stealing, for one thing, if you ask me. Squint didn't ask you, Sid. Uh, hey, what's wrong, Baldy? Hey, what's the idea of the gun? I'm covering the engine. Why? He didn't do anything. Get your hands up, Redskin. Now, uh, listen, Baldy. Shut up, Sid. Jack, take the engine's guns. Sure thing. Good. You can't get away with this, Baldy. The engine's got as much right to be here as you have. You know who he is? What do I care who he is as long as his money's good? He'd probably give me a phony name anyway if I asked him questions. He's Toto. Huh? The engine who travels with the Lone Ranger. You're loco. I was in Laredo when he brought in a friend of mine he and the Lone Ranger captured the engine didn't see me, but I'll never forget him. What about it, Redskin? Is Baldy right? Me not talk. You don't have to. I know who you are. What made you think he was on the dodge, Sid? Well, I I found a black mask in his saddlebag, man. I thought he was now who... The Lone Ranger wears masks. Yeah, but I didn't connect the engine with him. Tie his hands and feet, Squint, while I keep him covered. All right. Gag him with your bandana, Jack. Yeah. What are you, you going to do with him? Kill him? Huh? Don't be a fool. 
the masked man comes to looking for him and finds him dead, we'll be in real trouble. But we can't let him go. He knows too much. You can't have him lying here dead. We can't carry his body out of here. There's just one thing to do. Get a hole dug right here in this cellar floor before we kill the engine. And we'll be ready to bury him without any loss of time. Uh, that's a good idea. All right, get some spades and picks from the shop and we'll start digging. Meanwhile, as darkness fell, the Lone Ranger waited impatiently for Tonto to return from town. Eager for news of the outlaws they had followed, he decided to ride to meet his Indian friend. Easy, silver, easy. When he reached the edge of town without seeing Tonto, the Lone Ranger became concerned. Pulling his hat low over his eyes to conceal his mask, he rode into Moose Jaw. Ahead was the blacksmith shop, apparently closed for the night. As he passed it, a whinny sounded. When the great horse Silver whinnied in reply, the Lone Ranger drew rein. Oh, oh, that scout. He's just telling me color. The faint light coming from the dying fire inside the shop revealed Scout where Sid Cinder had left him. As the Lone Ranger turned from the shop window, he felt the barrel of a gun at his back. What? What's the idea, stranger? Turn around slow. Keep your hands away from your holsters. Who are you? Slim March, Sheriff of Moose Jaw County. And as for you, what? Oh, you're masked. I can explain the mask, Sheriff. Save the explanations. You're going to jail. For what? Suspicion of being Baldy Bennett or one of his gang. What do you know about Bennett? Ever since an Indian came to my office this evening to tell me those crooks were around here, I've been on the watch. I saw you ride into town and come here, but I didn't spot your mask till you turned around. Where did the Indian go after he talked to you? He might have left town, for all I know. He didn't. His horse is still in the blacksmith shop. At that moment, Scout whinnied to his masked friend and the great horse, Silver. As the sheriff turned to look through the shop window at the restless paint, the Lone Ranger brought a rigid palm down hard against the lawman's wrist. Oh, With an exclamation of pain and surprise, Slim March dropped his gun. Leave the gun on the ground, Sheriff, for the time being. You, you've got me covered. I'll holster my gun if you'll give me a chance. What kind of a chance? I think Tonto's inside that shop. Tonto? My Indian friend. He may be in trouble. Oh. I'm going in there to look for him. What about me? Come with me if you like, or wait here for me. While you break into Sid's place? That's blunt, but it's a general idea. Why, it's, it's illegal... But uh, if the Indian's named Tonto and you're the man I'm beginning to think you are... Many people call me the Lone Ranger. All right. I'll go along with you. Good. You may need your gun. Here. Thanks. Now I know you're on the level. Is there a back door to this place? Yeah, it opens into Sid's living quarters. Come on. We'll try to force the lock. Wincing at the illegality of the action, the sheriff watched silently while the Lone Ranger forced the lock on Sid Cinder's back door. A few minutes later, they entered the dark living quarters behind the blacksmith shop. As Scout whinnied restlessly from the shop on the other side of a flimsy partition, the Lone Ranger heard the sound of digging and the murmur of men's voices. The sheriff whispered, Hey, Where's that noise coming from? Look at the floor, Sheriff. See the light coming through the cracks? Jumping Jupiter, it's a trap door. There's a cellar under here. Didn't you know about it? No. Well, I'm going up to the shop and crack the engine cord, boys. Uh, get rid of them if you have to. You worry about the rich kids, I'll take care of the horse. As Sid stepped into the room from the cellar steps, the Lone Ranger pressed his coat against the crooked blacksmith's ribs. <laughs> Don't make a sound. Oh, you've got the engine downstairs, I'll Sid. <laughs> Sheriff! You'll keep him covered, Sheriff. I'll go down after his pals. I'll watch him. You keep quiet, Sid. Don't try warning those others. As the Lone Ranger descended the narrow stairs with a coat in each hand, Chicago Jack Murdoch and Squint continued their work on the hole they were deepening for Tonto's grave. Assuming that Sid Cinder was returning to the cellar, Baldy Bennett turned from his work to speak to the blacksmith. Too late, he realized his mistake. Reach! 
Baldy's gun fairly flew from its holster, but a silver bullet smashed the weapon before it completely cleared leather. A second bullet hit Baldy's shoulder, driving him back into the hole. Dropping their spades, Squint and Chicago Jack grabbed their guns. The masked man's colts roared again. A bullet grazed the safe cracker's knuckles, while Squint staggered back with a broken arm. If you want more gunplay... No, no, I'm hurt. Get your hands up and keep them there. Holstering his right-hand gun, the masked man took a knife from a sheath on his belt and held the blade out. Hold out your hands, Toto. Still covering the wounded outlaws, he slashed the ropes around the Indian's wrists. A moment later, Toto took the gag from his mouth. Uh, me... Me not think you find me in time, Kimisabi. I might not have found you at all if it hadn't been for Scout. Uh, these fellas, Baldy Bennett, Chicago Jack Murdoch, and Squint. Where's the loot from the cattleman's bank? Me hear him say money and gold in saddlebags there and bunk. Good. Now, if you'll tie their hands, Toto, we'll take these three upstairs. Uh, have any trouble with those skunks, mister? Everything's under control, Sheriff. Go on down, Sid. Join the rest of the crew. Uh, you've made a mistake, Sheriff. I'm just a poor black. You're a two-faced, triple-twisted, double-distilled crook. Sheriff, the stolen cash is there on the bunk. And we'll have these men tied in just a minute. I'm mighty grateful to you for tonight's work. If it hadn't been for you, I might never have found out Sid was in cahoots with the crooks. I'm glad Todd and I were able to expose him. Now, if you'll send a telegram to Marshal Howe in Rawhide, he'll send someone to pick up the stolen money. Good. I will help you take these men to jail. There. That'll hold him. Can't you stay around town, mister? No, Sheriff. We're leaving now. Otto's waiting outside with the horses. I sure hope you'll come back soon. We'll likely meet again. Adios. Goodbye. And thanks again. Hey, that red skin. Not knowing who he was. That's what a lot of crooks say. After a tangle with Tonto and the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.